Where do your thyroid levels need to be in order to not have thyroid symptoms? You need to know where all your thyroid level labs are, and you need to make sure that your provider is using better ranges to get you in a good range so that you don't have symptoms. So there is a large list of thyroid labs that I check on patients when they have thyroid disease so I can help make sure their thyroid is functioning to the best of its ability. So we're gonna talk about that today and we're gonna talk about the ranges that I use. I'm Dr. Cassie Smith, I'm an endocrinologist and I'm here to help you learn how to not have thyroid symptoms. So thyroid labs can be pretty in depth. I check a lot of things. So let's start with your actual thyroid labs. So I check a TSH, a free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and TPO. If your provider has not checked all of these at least once, might be time to find a new provider. TSH is very important. Ideally, your level is less than 2.0, and really, you want it closer to 0.5. The lower, the better. If your level is above two, especially if you're a woman, you're likely having symptoms. You're cold, your hair's falling out, you're tired, you're gaining weight. Free T4, around 1.0 to 1.5. The most important thyroid lab is your free T3. Your free T3 is your active thyroid hormone, and you want this level to be higher because that is the level that goes into the cell and helps cells work from a thyroid perspective so that you don't have symptoms. I like 3.6 to 4.5. This level needs to be on the higher side of normal. The timing of when you take your thyroid medication is very important. Why is that? Because if you're on armor, you're on nature, you're on some sort of desiccated thyroid hormone, if you take your thyroid medication and immediately go get a blood test, this free T3 level is going to read higher than it really is. Ideally, you take your thyroid medication, you wait about five hours, and then you get your blood level drawn. This will give us a good idea at steady state where that free T3 level is. If you don't take your thyroid medicine for hours, like you didn't take it till the day prior and you get your level drawn, this level may be falsely low. So it is important to make sure that you get your blood work done five hours after you take your thyroid medication if you're on a thyroid medication with a large amount of free T3. Reverse T3 is also very important. I shoot for between eight and 15. When this level is higher, it's indicative of inflammation. Reverse T3 is made when your body cannot convert free T4 into free T3. Ideally, when our thyroid makes T4, or we take T4 in the form of levothyroxine or Synthroid, our body converts free T4 into free T3. However, if you have a lot of inflammation, you're obese, you have diabetes, there are lots of conditions that change this free T4 conversion into free T3, it makes reverse T3. Reverse T3 is inactive, it cannot work. Your cell is not able to take reverse T3 in, and so if you have high levels of reverse T3, your cell does not have the free T3 to take in and utilize as energy and make the functions of the cell worse, and therefore if your reverse T3 is high and your free T3 is low, you will develop symptoms of hypothyroidism. TPO is an antibody level that's also important. When this is high, it's indicative of Hashimoto's. It's indicative of inflammation. So ideally, your TPO antibody is as low as possible. Unfortunately, millions of people in this country have elevated TPO antibodies, and they either don't understand what they mean, or their providers say this is fine, assuming these numbers are all normal. If this number is high and this number is low, your reverse T3, then you may already need some thyroid medication, or we need to start working on ways to lower inflammation to help your thyroid be better. So this is kind of a general overall level of the amount of inflammation in your thyroid to tell us whether it's inflamed or whether it's not. This is very important. But let's get into like some expert thyroid management, okay? So coming from an endocrinologist, I also check these levels. Why is that? Because there are other things that can actually affect how your thyroid works, okay? So there are micronutrients that are very important, starting with iodine. We need iodine in order to take T4 and T3 into cells. So if your iodine is low, this is going to affect the function of your thyroid. I look for levels between 70 and 100. With levels less than 60, your cells are not going to be able to bring thyroid hormone into the cell and it's not gonna be able to function. Another really, really, really important level is ferritin. You need a level of 70 or above to again, take T3 into the cell. So if your ferritin is four, five, 10, 20, like some of these people I see, then your body is not able to take free T3, move it into the cell and actually make those cells work. 
So although it is not a thyroid hormone, it is extremely important to know your level because if it is less than 70, your thyroid does not have the full ability to work. I find tons of people with ferritin levels in single digits and I treat them with iron infusions because until their ferritin comes up, their thyroid cannot function. These people are gonna be cold, they're gonna have leg cramps, they're gonna be very tired, they get short of breath, Sometimes they turn red after they exercise. So you should know what this level is, especially if you're a menstruating woman, because when you have menstrual cycles and bleed, this is going to deplete your iron stores. And at just a blood count, like a CBC hemoglobin, you can have a completely normal hemoglobin and hematocrit with very low ferritin levels. I see it every week. Insulin and cortisol are also very important levels, and this is just markers of inflammation. So if your fasting insulin level should be less than five, if it's above five, then you have some insulin resistance, and this is indicative of inflammation. Same thing with cortisol. I like your morning cortisol to be between nine and 17. If you have a really high morning cortisol, excess of 20, this is telling me that you have some chronic inflammation. So that elevated cortisol and the elevated insulin level are going to affect your thyroid. It's going to affect your T3's ability to go into cells. Because when you're chronically inflamed, your cell is not able to take that free T3 through what's called a lipid body bilayer membrane. So the T3 sets on a receptor on the outside of your cell, and then that T3 is brought into the cell through a lipid bilayer. If you are chronically inflamed, that lipid bilayer gets very tense and it's hard for that T3 to come in. So it's kind of like trying to walk through a locked door. It's very easy to walk through a door that's open, but if it's locked, it's much more difficult. And so when you're chronically inflamed and your insulin's very high and your cortisol's really high, also your TPO's high, you know that T3 is having a difficult time going from the bloodstream into to the actual cell. And that's why a lot of people with normal thyroid levels will have symptoms because even though their free T3 is 3.5 or maybe 3.6, if their insulin's high and their cortisol's high and their TPO is high and they're inflamed, that level in their blood cannot get into the cell and actually work. B12 and folate levels are also important. When you have B12 deficiency, that tells me you're probably likely inflamed through your gut. Unless you are vegan, most people get adequate amounts of B12 and folate in their diet. Unless they have something called MTHFR, which is important to find. That means you're not able to absorb and methylate B vitamins. And ultimately that's gonna make you very tired cause some chronic inflammation and ultimately lead to issues with your thyroid. So I like vitamin B12 levels to be at least 650 or higher and I like folate levels to be 12 or higher. If they're not, I'm searching for why. Are they vegan? Are they inflamed? Do they have MTHFR? Because again, this all ties back to your thyroid. I wanna know what is your vitamin D level? I like it to be between 60 and 100. When you have vitamin D deficiency, this causes inflammation. Inflammation causes your thyroid to not work. And I also wanna know what are your sex hormones? So that means what is your estrogen? What is your testosterone? If you're a woman, what is your progesterone? What is your FSH and LH? I wanna know how your pituitary perceives these hormones. Because if you have a lot of sex hormone dysfunction, so if you're going through menopause or these levels are low, this is also going to affect how your thyroid works because it causes inflammation. A lot of times when your insulin's high and your cortisol's high, it's gonna drive down your sex hormones. It's gonna make your progesterone lower. It's gonna make your estrogen lower. These are gonna cause symptoms as well, which are sometimes confused with hypothyroid. Symptoms. So low sex hormones, menopausal-like symptoms in women, or low testosterone symptoms in men can also cause low sex drive, can cause weight gain, can cause fatigue, insulin resistance. And so I like to look at all of these labs with a big picture so I can really figure out what's going on with my patients. Because I think if you have this and you tackle and address this all at once, people feel better and it's gonna help their thyroid actually function well. Again, your thyroid is very important because it's a representation of your overall health. So when your thyroid's not working well, I know something is wrong, not only from a thyroid standpoint, but likely from an inflammatory standpoint. I also sometimes use ANA, I use CRP, so high sensitivity CRP and uric acid levels, so that I can get an idea of how inflamed you are and the best ways to help fix you. If you like this information, make sure that you like, you share this with a friend, comment, tell me what you liked, what you didn't, what I can teach you. So don't forget to subscribe. Make sure that you hit the notification so you don't miss any of the content that I'm making for you guys.